Hello and welcome again to the Rider Review. This is Eric Rutt Rider and this week we're going to be taking a look back at the 2006 sci-fi action thriller titled Ultraviolet. Now Ultraviolet runs for 87 minutes long. It is directed by Kurt Wimmer and the script was written by Kurt Wimmer. Uh, it is produced by John Baldecki. Lucas Foster, Tony Mark, and Pauline Chan. The script was done by Klaus Bedelt. The cinematography by Arthur Wong. And the editing was done by William Ye. And the stars of the movie are Mila Jovovich, Cameron Bright, Nick Chinland, uh, William Fitchner, Scott Piper, Christopher Garner, Sebastian Andriou, uh, Ricardo Mahmoud Vega, Jennifer Caputo, Duck Lou, Kieran O'Rourke, Ryan Martin, and Digger Mesh. And what could I say about this movie? You know, I'm 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 a big fan of action movies, and I like uh, action movies that come with a great storyline, and I like action that comes with with a recurring theme that doesn't depend on just repetitive stuff or too much dependency on CGI and blue screen. But unfortunately, Ultraviolet seems to depend way too much emphasis on blue screen, way too much emphasis on big explosive thrills that there really does not have room to convey a storyline to it. And there was a lot of editing out in this movie. Maybe because I maybe didn't get a chance to see the uncut version of Ultraviolet. But as it stands out as a movie, and maybe it's not entirely at the fault of the performers or the director, Kurt Wimmer. But I do have to say this, but Ultraviolet was pretty bad. Not... Pissed off bad as in Batman and Robin, but still bad enough. So with the overly saturated usage of CGI animation, Ultraviolet could potentially pass off as a sequel to the 1982 classic Tron. It's quite obvious as to why Mila Jovovich was intrigued to star in this vehicle. All she had to do was simply abide through green screen and voila there's really nothing to it and I mean that in a literal sense all she has to do is put herself in a green screen hook up with a con with a bunch of computer graphic uh, villains baddies defeat them in one swipe and voila and this thing just keeps going on and on repetitively so there really wasn't really much of a story to go with, to go with the whole action fighting stuff. Okay, I admit that this movie is not gonna win Academy Awards, and I admit that this movie is not going was not going to go into any direction of anything that will change your life forever. No, yes, I understand that the movie was meant for escapism, but at least tell some kind of a story and not just depend on repetitive on repetitive fight scenes because you think that our audience is only just there just to watch Violet kick ass. We want some story to go with it. We don't have much of a story. And if we do have a story, why does it have to be so confusing? There was really nothing to do. Ex there was really nothing to this movie except Lots of violence and overly excessive CGI. I can be more entertained getting out my PlayStation and feel more of a sense of seeing anything meaningful than to sit through this movie again, which in this case was highly unlikely. I get more entertainment value just taking out my PlayStation and play a few video games. I, I don't necessarily need to have to watch this movie. And I get more of a storyline through a PlayStation game than to this movie, Ultraviolet. It's, 
uh, it's kind of sad when you think about it. Well, not sad as in boo-hoo sad, but just... It's just too dependent on repetitive scenarios. Mix things up a little bit. Have some story. Have some drama. But anyhow, at first glance, the lively animation does look very awesome. But then they rapidly start to wear out its welcome to the point where it begins to be overwhelmingly aggravating. By the first five minutes, it becomes clear that the movie was clearly intended for two types of audience members. One for fans of the science fiction genre, which is okay in my sense. I mean, I love science fiction too. And the second are for those who have short attention spans. Who just want to who just say, hey, come on, never mind all this dramatic bullshit. Let's get some fucking action going. That's really basically what this movie is. I mean, it's just for hyperactive people who don't give a flying fuck about what's about the about the backstory. I mean, there's no backstory to to Violet. There's no there's no real origin story of how this this this, this disease you know turns you into a vampire-like hemophage, and some evil dictator wants to wipe out the hemophages and so and so they abduct a boy and she must rescue this boy because he's probably the key to cure people to cure these hemophages from their illnesses but let me continue where where I've left off in my notes so here we are we have Mila Jovovich she stars as Violet who has an illness called Hemoglophagia. Don't have to look up in the medical medical books because it's just a made up fabricated illness. Don't worry. Don't worry, I'm not insulting the medical doctors out there or to those who are practicing medicine. There is no such thing as hemoglophagia. So you could rest easy on that. Anyhow, this disease gives her superhuman strength, which makes her into a hemophage, who must protect a boy named Six, played by Cameron Bright, as she goes into battle against strange humanoid minions, led by the evil ruler named Fernandad Daxis, played by Nick Chinlund, who seems to kind of wear some kind of strange looking salt shaker tubes up his nostrils okay so this hemoglophagia gives you superpowers super strength super intelligence and then I ask myself why do you want to be cured of that disease and it doesn't seem like a disease that it doesn't seem like a disease that's deadly I think this illness is actually an acid who doesn't want to have super, superhuman strength, superhuman powers, and super intelligence? Don't kill me. Keep me flourished. So this is an illness that actually makes you into a better human. So I spoil a good thing. Makes you wonder, huh? I'll go for that anytime. Even though it pans off as a simple by the numbers sci fi action film, Ultraviolet has a reputation of being both complex when it really shouldn't and very repetitive in its action scenes. And sure, I have to admit, Violet does look sexy in her leather-clad apparel and her Veronica Lodge hairdo. We have to really care about the characters, both the heroes and the villains, to get a better understanding of them to really invest into this movie. Jovovich doesn't really have a lot to say in this film. She's practically monotone and one-dimensional. 
But she's not the only one. I mean, even this Cameron Bright kid could have been... I mean, couldn't they have found a boy who was... Who was... Who could be any less wooden than him? I mean, he practically looks like a zombie. I mean, he has this... I mean, he doesn't hardly say anything, and he's got this soul. And he even speaks like he's trying to remember everything from the from his from his script. I mean, he takes a long time to to memorize his lines, and it actually feels forced. And uh, then again, also, you know. The villain in this story, too, is also pretty one-dimensional. I mean, his purpose is to wipe out the hemophages. But he's also just pretty much one-dimensional in his delivery as a villain. And he doesn't kind of resemble of anybody who could be redeemably... Scary in my humble opinion So I really didn't care too much for the hero and I didn't really care too much for the villain Now I know director Kurt Wimmer Wanted to sort of base ultraviolet, you know off of sort of either like a comic book type of movie or a graphic novel type. And I was also once led to believe that Ultraviolet was based off of a comic book. I mean, I said to myself, it's got to be a comic book type of movie because it felt like a comic book or a video game based type thing. But I was actually quite surprised that I was wrong on both accounts. In the nearly 90 minute film, Violet in green screen glory is battling Dexus's hordes of minions who look tough and menacing for my reach, but then they just stand there like numbskulls and wind up getting decapitated. I mean, where's the challenge? I mean, she's like battling like, she's like one person battling hordes of of these villains and they don't even and they don't even put up a fight or anything like that which is insulting and you would expect to see some maybe some kind of blood or scratch or bruises from violet during her battles but no no scars at all so where's the believability in that There's a lot of things in this movie that just don't seem to measure up. And this is kind of like... Why this movie frustrated me quite a lot. It must have been a hefty budget to make this movie due to the amount of special effects utilized. And if that's not enough, Writer-director Kurt Wimmer hires a greener-than-ever-green young thespian like Cameron Bright, who seems dazed and expressionless the whole time through. Sometimes I think his kid was a cyborg. He hardly ever blinked. I mean, he always kind of looked... stiff. And the way he delivered his lines was kind of like this looks like I was memorizing my lines while I was doing this movie I wanted to get every last word in but I just can't seem to do it you know that's kind of like his acting I mean this kid sucked Maybe, 
maybe he was still, you know, just young and inexperienced. But, yeah, okay, I know that Cameron Bright actually did get better through later years. But here, he's just, he's just wooden and one-dimensional. Even though this kid was supposed to play off as the key to the cure for hemoglobagia. But it would have been much more easier if they would have had some kind of CGI robot to replace him. And it wouldn't even make a fucking difference. And I often did wonder if this sixth character was a human or a cyborg. And to top it all off, this kid was pale like a ghost. He looked like vanilla ice cream with eyes. And like I said, in the end, what difference would it make if they hired a real human or a cyborg? For Wimmer, there was very little in scripting to even care about what was happening. There are some shades of minority report touches in this, you know, dystopian society. All the video game come to life action emanates. In this world, there only appears to be three occupations you can pursue. You can either be an evil, corrupt corporate executive, a scientist, or an enforcer. In this future where they live in, you have to pick one of the three, or you're worthless. That's just the impression I get. Sure, that may sound simple, but the dialogue is unashamedly anything but. There's a plethora of high-tech, incoherent gibbering about antigens, antidotes, and the little manifestations that if you take their whole diatribe seriously and try to make a sense out of it, you'll probably most likely give yourself a migraine. It tries to have that same aura as that of the Matrix, but it's nowhere near that classic film series. I mean, here's the th worst part about this science fiction movie. It takes itself way too fucking seriously. When really, we can't take anything seriously. But of course, we can't take anything humorously because there's nothing humorous about this movie. And we can't take anything, you know, just for entertainment value because there's nothing really remotely entertaining about this movie. Because there's no story backline, all it is is just Violet taking on hordes of minions, beating them with one swipe of a gun or a sword or some kind of martial art gun slinging called Gunkata, which was used more to brilliant effect in another Kurt Wimmer project called Equilibrium. But here, just does not seem to work. I mean, Equilibrium was not that great of a movie, but at least there was some storyline and some characters that you could genuinely care about. Here, we can't care about any of them because there is real no backstory to go with the characters. So we're pretty much lost in this shuffle. The first 15 minutes of this movie were very captivating, but after a while it just gets done to death and all the originality gets drained out, making this movie quite uneventful. You have a platoon full of baddies surrounding Violet and with her powerful sword annihilates them in just one swipe or a few shots of gunfire. I'm guessing being the enforcer is the hardest job there is. And if you think the ending was any great way to close out, it's just as, as the ending is very convoluted as we're invited to a flaming sword battle taking place in the dark, which feels like there's a bit of Highlander going for it, only less exciting and less dramatic. 
So, in spite of the film's gratuitous violence and coarse language, Ultraviolet is anything but an eventful night out for anyone. Between the overdone action sequences and the overabundance of CGI and very little in character development, this movie has every chance of winning the Oscars as Wimpy from Popeyes gives up hamburgers. And that will probably likely never happen. So with that that's said and done, I can't really give too much high marks for the movie Ultraviolet. So in all said and done, I have to give Ultraviolet out of a scale of 10, a 4. I just don't recommend it. So I guess this ends my writer review. Thank you all for listening in. If you wish to subscribe to my channel, please feel free to do so. If you wish to leave a comment, go right ahead. Just remember, be kind, be courteous, and don't be rude. And I will be back again with another movie review. So until next time, this is Eric Red Ryder saying keep watching those movies. And I'll see you around. Goodbye.